yeah, I would love to talk about Barbarian. You said something a couple of weeks ago, and and I don't want to misquote you, but you, do I have it right that you said the first two thirds of that movie you enjoyed a yeah. lot? Yeah. Yeah, same. I was so into that movie. The I I consider it a movie divided into thirds. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there's the first third with um, Bill Skarsgård. Yeah. yeah. And then the second one with the surprise guy, which I don't want, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people know it's, who it is by now. It's hard to talk about this movie without kind of maybe at the very end of this episode, we'll just do a spoiler talk on top of what we're doing here. Or maybe we'll sure. just do a separate file, perhaps, if we have time. I don't think we're going to have time, though, because i got to go pick up the boy in 45 minutes. The, the, the uh, the schedule is very compressed, as you know. So I know, I know. If you ever want to end up doing a spoiler alert, just call me and we'll do it really quick. But yeah, this the the middle I thought was it had a delightful surprise, someone mm-hmm. we don't see very often, and then the third was like meh. I thought, yeah, kind of meh. Yeah, and uh, I'm hearing that uh, a lot of people love the end, but they didn't love the first two acts, or the first act especially. They found it boring, which is, it's funny, because every now and again a movie comes out that really, really does divide people. They love part of it, but not the other part, and like you're the one camp or the other, because this is almost two movies in one. And uh, let's do a little little setup. I'll, I'll give a little setup so we can do an uh, appropriate uh, sure. actual uh, flex fashion here. So this is uh, written and directed by Zach Kreger, is the guy's name, and... Uh, he he has done uh, other things such as uh, Wrecked and uh, The White Kid You Know, which is a very popular uh, show that uh, from 2007 to 2011, uh, he was actually in that. And I guess he was in talking to Geo yesterday. He's trying to run from some other rom-com that his name was associated with. So he's definitely trying to go hard the other way with this one. It stars. I feel like we're long far enough down that we can actually talk about the fact that Bill Skarsgård, Geo, uh, Geo, joint Geo. Georgina Campbell, as well as Justin Long, is in this. He's even in the trailer. If you're on IMDb, like you just <laughs> okay. All right, so, let's talk about him. <laughs> but we got to see it without knowing that he's in it, and it was really, really mm-hmm. fun to just like at the almost exactly halfway through the movie, uh, it just takes a hard left turn, and we're in a different location and with a completely different type of character. So it opens up with a woman who is uh, uh, showing up to an Airbnb, which pretty much we can all relate to. We've all been to an Airbnb, mm-hmm. Airbnb in a weird uh, place we've never been to. She gets there after dark, so she doesn't even know what neighborhood she's really in. And it's pouring rain, and then she goes up, and the, the key's not, the code's not working, and she's calling the, the host of the Airbnb. And then uh, she realizes somebody's in the house, and that somebody is Bill Skarsgård, who comes to the door, and he's your typically cast, like, white middle like you know late mid late 30s type of guy who might be up to no good right so you're not trusting him at right yeah he has this combo of handsome and charming but creepy also ted bundy ted bundy vibe a little bit yeah very much so and he invites her in and she's real skeptical but it's like she's not sure where she is and this whole thing could have been avoided if she just said you know what fuck it, I'm going to get in my car and go to uh, another town over or something. Mm -hmm. She chose not to do that, which a bit of a plot hole, I guess, but I don't want to pick too many Nicks here. Uh, Pick too too many, too many Nicks. Well, she was young. And I think that, I think they tried to address that, which was she had already, like her money was tied up already in this Airbnb. It didn't seem like she really had money to go to a hotel so I think they tried to address that. And I can understand that, you know, as a as a younger person and like knowing my, my daughters and my nieces, if they went to an Airbnb and this whole thing happened, I think they would, well, my daughters would call me <laughs> and I would be putting the credit card down. But if they couldn't get a hold of me, I think they would have a hard choice of whether they were just going to stay and um because of like the financial side of it so i could understand that what about like a weird creepy he wasn't really creepy but he he was he was almost too nice and too over the top to be trusted type thing like you as an audience you know that he's up to something right and i think that she kind of felt the exact same way the character well, yeah, I, she felt it that way because she's a single woman on her own but then he did enough to make her comfortable and he was uh he gallantly offered to take the couch. And so I think she became comfortable enough and they set that up really well. 
I thought. Um, I, I tried to put myself in her shoes and I was like, you know, maybe at that age, I might have stayed as well. Not like the smartest decision, but he they did a good job of like at least initially making sure that there was a plausible reason why she could stay. Yes, they, they did. A, a, I, I wasn't being fair. And like <laughs> he also uh, explains to her that she's not going to find a hotel anywhere because there's a mm-hmm. convention in town. And uh, so they 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 did their they took care of the writing angle to an extent. I still think mm-hmm. she might have, in that situation, before passing over the threshold, decided to turn back, get in her car, and maybe even sleep in her car and lock sure. the doors. Or mm-hmm. you know, that's that's what I would have done as as a young woman who mm-hmm. felt in peril. But I'm not a young woman, so who who knows if that's accurate? But uh, from and by the way, I'm smoking because I'm really stupid. And when all the stuff went down with Brian a couple nights ago, I kept fighting the urge to go out and buy my first pack in like months. And I decided to go, you, you find out your friend's really, really sick and might be dying. So you go out and you start killing yourself. It's, it's really stupid, but that's the way the addict mind works. So, uh, so she's in the house and then it kind of becomes like this psychological thriller as to like, you know, what's he up to? How is she interpreting? Is she missing anything? And you're really paying close attention. And I was, I thought it was really well directed and I was completely invested in her situation as, yes, as small as the stakes were in a grand scheme. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's definitely got that whole like male uh, threat thing and and it, it's about rape. And ultimately this whole movie is about mm-hmm. rape. I, I would love to hear your point of view on that without giving everything away. Cause I've decided what we're going to do here, Florence, is you're going to throw to one of your other segments, which is a red light, green light, and okay. then we'll have enough time to uh, do a, a proper spoiler only uh, for Patreon on, on this movie, Be- uh, Barbarian. All right. So what? So, no, but not right now. We're going to oh, do that. Okay. <laughs> which, yeah. So what's your, how did you interpret it? Is, is that fair? Is that accurate? That's definitely what Gio was uh, picking up when we talked about it a little bit. Um, uh, you know, honestly, I don't even think that was my, at, at the end, I mean, it, it's a, it's the theme, but I don't, I didn't pick up on that. Like, that's like the whole theme of this movie. It just hit, well, gosh, now, you know, now that you're saying it, I'm thinking about the second part with Justin Long and everything that happened with him. You know what? I guess so. (laughs) Yeah. Because he, he's, we, we learned right straight away with Justin Long. He's a Hollywood producer type. Uh, who's working on a TV show, and he's just kind of one of these guys that that moved out to Hollywood to make it, and he did because he's got such an ego, and he just pushes forward, uh, whether in business or in the bedroom, uh, it turns out. And uh, he immediately, we learned that he's getting accused of something. He's getting canceled for um, very serious accusations, and then it kind of takes off from there. And I, I want to leave it there because there's so much discovery in this movie for lack of a better term Mm -hmm. it it really was fun kind of peeling back the onion and seeing each progression be completely new and different um and it all starts with the uh with bill skarsgård in the in in the airbnb and then we learn about the bucket the bed and the camera and that becomes Mm -hmm. a whole different vibe and a different thing and a different set and it keeps going and going and it's not supernatural it's it's natural (laughs) Uh, but unnatural. It's not supernatural, it's unnatural where it all ends up. However, without talking about the end, my problem with the end, and I would love to hear your take on it as a, as a horror fan, is it it asked me to take a like a very, very high and long leap, and I wasn't mm-hmm. able to, to land at all. I was I was kind of floating around going, this is just such horse shit and BS. Yes, it felt a little bit lazy to me at the end because I was so excited about the first part and the second part that when it took the shift in the third part, it became a bummer to me. Like I didn't care. It became more of a gross out when it felt like it was more um, like a psychological thriller in the beginning. And then in the middle it had like with Justin Long, even though he was that swarmy actor, rapist guy it also had humor in it and then the end a lot of really good humor yeah really good humor and then the end it felt to me like the the filmmakers and the director and writer in particular just started having too much fun right Mm -hmm. didn't really fit for me now i've talked to people who say that it totally did fit and it was fantastic and it worked for them but yes tons of people love the end um the group that i saw it with it was um 
my daughters, and we all felt the same about the end. Although we did, you mentioned um, the bucket, the camera, and the bed. Um, our favorite part of the third part was the videotapes and the videotape labels and how they yes, were labeled. Send me an email about this. This is very funny. <laughs> so we've been calling ourselves these videotape labels. Mm -hmm. And I am a um, girl who asks for a magazine because I can't stand to be somewhere where I don't have something to read. Mm -hmm. So that would be like something I would be asking for. Um, my daughter would be the girl who has nonstop stomach aches. Like we just, we've been doing it ever since we saw this movie. I think we're still I, you know, tiptoeing around it enough that we're, we're if, for anyone who hasn't seen it, that there, there might be enough intrigue there to get them to, to take the leap, which you're going to be asked to do with this one for sure. Uh, but it's a it's a really it's a really good horror film from my point of view. And because as somebody who doesn't love horror, uh, I I really enjoyed. And you know what they did? Now that I'm talking more out loud about it with somebody, is they did maybe. What are the are there like three different types of horror? What would you say? Like how many different like real types of horror? Oh gosh, I mean I guess there's gosh. slasher, there's supernatural, maybe even a subcategory of supernatural is haunted houses. There's uh, like torture porn and gore. So I don't know. I think there's probably three with maybe like little subcategories of those. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, I know they nailed psychological, mm -hmm. right? Uh, thriller, psychological thriller. Uh, maybe the middle's thriller. And then it goes to more slasher at the end. Or even gore, even more like a torture gore. porn in a way. But there are like, uh, a lot of the time these horror films are one thing or the other. And this one seems to kind of, divert and dip into different genres yeah. within the horror genre i left being disappointed but i will admit that it's a movie that i've thought about quite a bit and i prop now that it's on hbo max i'll probably revisit it and see how i feel about the ending again i can tell you this that throughout the year this year barbarian is by far and away the winner as far as listeners uh begging me to watch it i i got so many uh nudges and emails from multiple multiple listeners and usually that's a great sign and i and once i watch it i mean the same thing was happening with some of my inner circle with dinner america who, who saw that like years ago at uh at uh festivals they're like oh, anderson you're gonna absolutely love this movie and i'm like i'll get to it and i had a file of it i think you remember mm -hmm. that dinner in america but they didn't have a u.s district dis distributor so i didn't want to watch it and love it and then not you know be able to uh, recommend it to people because they couldn't mm -hmm. see it but um, yeah, I got a lot of that from this one. It wasn't as good as usually they are when this many people are recommending them. Uh, and it's funny with with movies and structures and um, the way that they're put together. Like for you and I, if it started off with a a like one of the if the first act was one that we didn't love, but we stuck with it, and then it progressed, and then got really good, and then the last act was our favorite part, we would love this movie, right? Yes. But mm -hmm. because it ends with that, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth as you're, you know, shutting it down. And right. you saw it in the theater, right? I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the best way. The best way.